Welcome to Train Freediving. In this video, I'm going to talk about the different types of equalization that are available to you, the pros and cons of using each one, and which depths that each equalization method is appropriate for. The reason I'm making this video is because there are a few common questions that I see all the time regarding equalization. People are asking, for this equalization technique, should I be doing this or this? Or they might be asking, which technique do I need to use to get to this depth? I believe that by understanding the actual different techniques of equalization that are available to you and weighing out the pros and cons, I can help answer those questions. Now, through this video, I'm going to share a few video and audio clips when appropriate to really make the distinction between any type of equalization technique. Sometimes the difference between a technique is very subtle. However, that subtle difference makes a massive difference in the application, effectiveness, and pros and cons of that given technique. Now, with the help of a visual aid, I'm going to take you through each of the techniques and hopefully clear up all the questions that you might be having about which equalization techniques are available to you and which equalization technique is going to be the best one for you. As you probably expected, the first equalization technique that I'm going to talk about is just basic frenzel. Now this is the foundation technique that everything else that you do should be built on. Every single freediver should learn this as soon as possible and it's the one that's going to make not only your initial diving as a beginner, the most enjoyable and the most comfortable, it's also going to be what you build every other equalization technique on top of. Now just to give a quick explanation of what a frenzel is, all you're doing is separating your mouth into two air spaces with a tongue lock. So lifting your tongue to the top of your mouth separates the back air from the front air. Then maintaining a closed glottis, you can raise your larynx and compress the air at the back of your mouth into your sinuses and then popping out your ears. As you'll see with this video example, especially when I hold the microphone up to my neck, the defining characteristic of a basic frenzel or from, in my opinion, the defining characteristic of optimal technique with basic frenzel is that after the larynx is raised and the equalization is performed, you then open your glottis and return your larynx back to its starting position. So it's up from point A to point B and then back down from point B to point A. And you can clearly hear with the microphone that air is being transferred from my lungs into the space at the back of my mouth every time my larynx returns from point B back to point A. The main pros are that this technique is the most simple to learn and the most simple to manage. So there's not very many moving parts. And as soon as you can perform one frenzel correctly, then you can perform 200 frenzels correctly. And through an entire dive, nothing should change. You do the exact same thing from the surface all the way to the bottom. The other benefit is that it's very safe to use. If you can equalize with basic frenzel, you're still well within what's safe in terms of your lung compression, and you're not going to be putting yourself at any risk of squeeze. Now that brings me directly to the cons of this technique. As soon as you start diving deeper than 30 or maybe even 35 meters, the actual maximum depth that you can reach is going to rely completely on your blood shift and on your flexibility. So as soon as there's any small amount of negative pressure in the lungs, your equalization is going to completely shut down. Now that being said, if you have good quality training and you're approaching your entire or and your entire approach to diving is on point, it's very, very possible that you can equalize relatively easily and relatively safely all the way up to 60 meters. Now, some divers can go a little bit deeper than this, and for some divers, it's gonna stop a little bit shallower, but on average, with good quality training, I would expect most divers to be able to achieve 60 meters if they have good frenzel technique. Now, moving on, we're going to talk about frenzel with reverse packing. Now, at the basic level, there's going to be no difference between this and basic frenzel. However, as we start to get deeper, we can add in additional movements to help bring air up. Again, with this video example, especially when I hold the microphone near my neck, 
you'll see that I perform my equalization, return my larynx from point B back to point A, and then my Adam's apple actually drops even further, so let's say from point A to point C, and it's during this second movement where I'm bringing more air more forcefully up from my lungs. Now the main pros of this technique is that it's very easy to correct mistakes. If you miss an equalization or if you forget to open your glottis between frenzels and you don't get any air, it's all right. You can use this additional movement to refill the space behind your tongue and then continue equalizing. However, that is also the main con. Because we're using these additional movements, you can actually use the strength and power of your throat muscles to pull air out of your lungs. This means that you can actually force the technique. And as soon as you start forcing the technique, it's very easy to squeeze. Because there's a more powerful additional movement, the functional depth of this equalization technique is going to be, let's say, deeper than sixty for sure. And many divers are able to take this all the way up to 100. And again, there are exceptions where some people need to do this to get to 50, 55, and there's also exceptions where divers can go deeper than 100. But for most divers out there, again, with good quality training, you could expect to use this technique between 60 and 100. However, like I said, it's a little bit risky, and you're putting yourself in a place where it's gonna be very easy to squeeze. Now, if we look at the third equalization technique, we're going to be talking about what is sequential frenzel. Now, sequential frenzel is, in my opinion, the middle ground or the combination of mouth fill and frenzel. Now, if you see with the video example, this is done with full cheeks. So you're taking air into your mouth, you're filling up your mouth with air, just like you would with a mouth fill. However, the actual equalizations are performed with a K-lock and by lifting the larynx. So the pressurization of the ears is done just like a frenzel. However, we also have completely filled cheeks. Now, the pros and cons of this technique, of course, the main benefits are that this technique is extremely similar to frenzel. So for divers who've been diving for years without a mouth fill using frenzel, all they need to do at this point is start adding air into their cheeks and they're going to be able to equalize deeper and deeper with less effort required. The other benefit is because we have the air in our cheeks, but we're still using a K-lock to separate the back and front, if we do make any mistakes and we actually swallow some air back into our lungs or our stomach, generally the amount of air that we swallow is small. So if we do swallow one, two, or maybe even three times on a dive, most likely with sequential frenzel, the amount of air that you're losing is so small that you'll still be able to make it to your target depth. Of course, there is a few cons with this technique. Because we have to use our tongue and our larynx to equalize, we cannot take a maximally sized fill. If we were to compare with proper mouthfill technique, which I'll get to in a minute, you might only be able to take an 80 to 85% sized mouthfill and use it with sequential frenzel. We place a K-lock to equalize a few times, but then we need to refill that space with the air that we're storing in our cheeks, which means we have to lower the tongue, replace some air, and then raise the tongue again. And of course, this could trigger the urge to swallow, causing us to make bigger mistakes if we haven't practiced it correctly. Now, in terms of functional depth, for sure, up until 100 meters, you're only going to need sequential frenzel. It's going to be more than enough, more than enough air in your mouth, and then easy enough to manage that you can dive up to these depths with no issue. Now we're gonna discuss actual proper mouth fill variation. And the first one is what I call mouth fill with individual squeezes. And all that really is, and you can see with the video example, is again, you're filling your mouth with as much air as you can, and then to equalize your ears, just like you would with a frenzel, you're doing individual equalizations, but instead of using the tongue and the larynx, you're just squeezing your cheeks. So your tongue stays dropped all the way to the bottom of your mouth, and then you make the pressure by squeezing your cheeks. Now the main pro of this technique, compared to sequential frenzel, is that you can take a much larger size mouth fill. You don't need to use the tongue, you can keep it flat against the bottom, which means you can get even more air into your mouth. 
The cons with this is that it's very common that with individual cheat squeezes, you're going to require quite a lot of pressure. You're going to have to squeeze quite hard to perform those equalizations. Now this means you're going to put temp like temporarily during the dive, you're going to put quite a bit of strain on your glottis and then this is going to trigger the glottis or make it, it's going to be uh, easier for your glottis to open and then you're going to lose some air of your mouth fill. If we swallow, we're going to swallow while squeezing the cheeks and this means the amount of air you're going to swallow is going to be very, very high, probably the highest amount during all the equalization techniques. So even one swallow could potentially prevent you from actually reaching your depth. However, done correctly, in my opinion, this technique is more than enough to get you all the way up to a world record or even deeper. And then of course, there is the other mouthfill variation, and this is mouthfill with constant pressure. The only difference here is that instead of squeezing your cheeks individually for each individual equalization, what you do is you squeeze your cheeks to equalize once, and then you keep them squeezed to just maintain a full pressure inside your eustachian tubes, basically just keeping your ears open and equalized the entire way down. Of course, just like the other variation, you can get the biggest size mouthfill using this technique, and it could be potentially very relaxing. By equalizing once, you don't have to do anything else, you don't have to worry until you hit the bottom. However, there are a few cons with this technique as well. The first one is that your glottis can get quite tired and quite irritated. Since you're squeezing your cheeks, there's constantly going to be a pressure that's being put on your glottis where the air is trying to escape from your mouth back into your lungs. Now, this could cause quite a bit of tension in your throat, and if you're not used to it, either it's going to make you very uncomfortable, or it's just going to open and you're going to lose all your air into your mouth. And again, just with the last technique, if you swallow, the likelihood that you swallow a lot of your mouthfill, almost most of it, is going to be very high. Managed correctly, again, this technique can easily take you up to world records. However, managed incorrectly, if you're squeezing too hard, if your glottis is getting too tired, and if you swallow anything, one or two swallows is probably going to be enough to mess up your equalization, preventing you from getting to the depths that you want to go. Finally, the last equalization technique, which is really like a collection of equalization techniques, is hands-free or BTV. With this technique, unfortunately, I cannot film an example because you don't really do anything. All you're doing is actually opening the tubes and allowing the pressure just to equalize by itself without doing anything. You're not pushing any air into your ears. Of course, the pros with this technique is that it's extremely relaxing. You don't have to create any pressure. You don't have to create any force with your larynx. There's no force on your glottis. Everything is extremely relaxed, extremely comfortable. However, in my opinion, the main set of cons with these techniques are that there are reliability issues. If you have a little bit of mucus, if you have a tiny bit of congestion, or you're slightly dehydrated, the likelihood that your hands-free equalization doesn't work well or doesn't work perfectly is going to be much higher than with any of the other equalization techniques. With hands-free, even slight inflammation or congestion can completely stop your ear, one or two of your ears from equalizing. Now, of course, the functional depth of this technique is going to depend on which variation you're doing. So if you're doing hands-free with a mask and no mouth fill, it's going to be very similar to Frenzel or Frenzel reverse packing, which means it's going to work up to those types of depths, up to 60 or potentially 60 to 100 if you're adding in the reverse pack. And then with any other variation, if you start wearing the nose clip, if you start filling your mouth like you would with a mouth fill or with sequential Frenzel, and the only difference is instead of squeezing the cheeks or using the larynx, you're just opening your station tubes with hands-free, it's very safe to assume that you could dive to over 100 meters, potentially up to a world record. And the example that I always give is, I forget what year, I think 2009, um, a Czech diver, Martin Stepanek, dove with, I think, sequential Frenzel style, hands-free, with a mask, to 122 meters, which was a world record. So again, if you're a hands-free diver, there's no need to switch to these other traditional techniques. If you optimize the technique for yourself, it's possible to dive pretty much as deep as you could ever imagine diving 
with hands-free. So hopefully that has cleared up all the questions that you were having about which equalization techniques there are, how to do each of them individually, and then which one might be the best one for you to choose to dive to the depths that you want to dive to. Now at this point, there are a few additional things that I need to say. In my opinion, there's no rule that says that you need to stick to any individual equalization technique. If I was to look at my diving, I actually use three to four techniques depending on how I'm feeling. Most of my dives, I dive from zero to 20 meters using basic frenzel technique. Then I'll switch to doing sequential frenzel through the process of topping up my mouth fill. Then as I get closer to 30, 35 meters, I'll take my last mouth fill top up. Because my mouth is so full, I'll use constant pressure for a few meters, maybe getting down to 50, 55, and then I'll make a switch back to sequential frenzel. I'm using a combination of multiple techniques depending on how I'm feeling and depending on what is optimal to the depth I'm at and the size of my mouth fill. So for all of you out there, you can use this information that I shared with you in the video to really make the best decisions for yourself. You don't have to use any single technique. You don't have to use the same technique from the surface all the way to the bottom plate. Hopefully you can spend enough time practicing each of these individual techniques so that you have a bank of techniques that you can choose from and you can choose the correct technique for you at any given time during a single dive or during an entire period of training. Like I always try to say, there's no fixed way that you have to do things. If you do it right, if you're applying the right technique for you at the right time, your equalization is going to feel easy, it's going to feel automatic, and you're not going to really have to worry about whether or not you're going to make it to the bottom. All you have to do is enjoy your dives and get there.